We'd like, to, now that you've taken in a lot of information, we'd like to entertain you again for a moment. And so we're going to be showing another very compelling storyline. And this is from the episode, Who We Are. It's from Private Practice, Jennifer Cecil's show. And it's a storyline about drug addiction and an intervention. And as you watch this, it is, I am so transported into this story every time I see it, but you'll notice there is a lot of information conveyed in this very compelling drama. So I'm going to show you this as an example of what you'll be creating in the small groups, we hope. So let's take a look. And if you wouldn't mind turning off the lights. Um, the, the character Amelia, who is the neurosurgeon on our show, has been having some uh, drug addiction problems with, with OxyContin that she's taken from the office and she's been trying to hide it and she disappeared for about two weeks and showed back up at the office and the, the people that she'd worked with have finally decided the only way to, to get through to her is basically to perform an intervention with all of them there. Can we talk to you for a minute? Who's we? Hello. Hi, Amelia. I'm Lenny. Does she have a brain tumor? A giant carcinoma that she wants me to excise. That had better be what is going on here. Amelia, because everybody here cares about you. And they'd like you to stay and listen to what they have to say. Will you do that? An intervention? An intervention. Medical community. All right. The whole disease model comes from AA, where the first thing they try to do is get people to admit that they're powerless against their addiction. Because drugs function differently in their bodies. Addiction is a threefold disease. It's a disease that doesn't fire up unless you take the drugs. Amelia has control over that, right? I mean, she made a choice the first time she took those drugs, just like she has a choice today. <laughs> wow. You think people choose that misery? You think they, you think they choose that life? You think they want to be licking drugs off of bathroom floors and neglecting their kids and destroying their husbands and killing themselves? You think anyone who is not in the throes of a disease would consciously do that to themselves? Is that what you think? Jay. It sounds nice, but I don't think I can do it. Oh, you can. You can. I know you can. We'll help you. I'll help you. Amelia. It's a great rehab facility. They have a bed waiting for you. It's, it's right near the ocean. Will you come too? I'll come see you every day. Uh, I will. I'll be there. I'll be there. Yeah, I will. Get sober with me. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get sober together. <laughs> Should probably flush these. Yeah. Yeah. Or one last time. One last time. What now? Now you have to cut her off. When Amelia calls, and she will call, unless she's ready for help, you don't give her a ride. You don't give her money or a place to stay or her job back. The only call you can respond to is Amelia calling you for help to get off drugs. That's it. Tonight. Ma'am, do you know where you are? Can you give me your name? 
two boys, two girls. You can't die because we're getting clean. We're having a family. Ryan, Ryan, Ryan. You need someone to love. Ma'am, is there anyone you want me to call? Call Dr. Addison of Parms Montgomery. Tell her I said I'm ready to go to rehab. Hmm. Anybody else? <laughs> Gets me every time. I've seen this probably a hundred times, and it's so compelling. So that's good drama. And uh, let's. So now. We're going to break into small groups and keep that emotion because this is exactly what you're trying to evoke in creating your own stories. And we'll spend the next 30 minutes applying the techniques you learned in the first half of the workshop. And you'll be led by one of these amazing Hollywood writer producers. Um, thank you. This is because, in some ways, because it, it, it's really a conversation about implementation of programs. So I think actually for our best interest, we, we need to probably get beyond just the question of, for example, how do we implement, um, right. So for example, and I'm actually going to throw this open. I don't, I don't want to be the one doing the story. But if I were, and I just was like brainstorming, what do I do? So story of a doctor who comes from Buenos Aires, who goes back home to her, her the place where she lives in one of the, uh, one of the outlining areas in Argentina. She's got, um, she's working, and she's going to get married. And her, uh, you know, her, the, her mother-in-law, there's a mother-in-law generation and a younger generation, and she's got to deal with the question of screening and how it would work for older members of the, you know, for certain ages and other ages, and maybe there's a character who represents, I don't know how it works in Argentina, a kind of local um, administrator who would be implementing the program with whom she battles because one of them wants to do it across the board and she says no 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 if we are screening lots of 25 year olds we're missing the point and you're gonna overload the system so what we need to do is we need to create some kind of story that gets to the heart of this conflict of how do you implement a program of screening that doesn't misapply resources I'm sorry why don't we throw in a new element? Mm -hmm. Like, what about vaccination? Because that's not the story. Vaccination, the disclosure of vaccination, not the story. Yeah, OK, but <laughs> we, we, can, we, can, we can add an element of drama that, um, that they're not missing the point, but they're missing an element in the whole discussion. Just throwing right. in a new element. Although I would say, when we talked about it, say you need a specific. It's okay to get to get a given story right. So if we could do a story about screening that works properly, then that's okay. It's not that you need to. The, the, the answer is not necessarily to tell the whole story. You can't always say, look, the drama is in another place. The question is, where do you find the drama in this particular issue? To find the drama in the issue is I, I, the first question is, what are we trying? What do we want the audience of this story to be? Is this audience? an average Argentinian? Or is the, the audience, are you showing, is this a story that we're going to tell from one medical professional to another? I mean, is this a? So PEP tests were done from ages 21 and older. So right. if you want to do this new technology for HPV testing, just to give you the context, mm -hmm. if you do that to the women age 21, uh, a lot of them are going to be positive, and then they may be, have the, the wrong impression that they have uh, pre-cancer. And that's not true because this technology should be done at age 30 and over and less frequently than pap tests. So it's so stigmatizing. We don't want to stigmatize. I guess the yeah, stigmatization story is, would be a good point here. Right. Stigmatization because if you, before the old days of doing pap tests, which women are used to, mm -hmm. uh, to having, and uh, it, it was, oh, okay, it's a detection of pre-cancer. But now it's a virus that comes from sex and can cause cancer. And where did I get that from, you know? So this, the, the stigmatization would be a good point in the story. Okay. Um, so here's a question. I'm just going to keep throwing out questions. I'm going to ask you about that. But for example, if I were doing a story, I could tell a story in which a program was improperly implemented, in which 21-year-olds were screened with this, new technology. with this new technology, which results uh, were, were gotten that then turned out to be, in some sense, false positives, yeah. because later on they were going to be fine, which was an argument against doing that. But that story 
might be too simple and might also be an argument against all screening. And it would not necessarily encourage 30-year-olds to do that. So how do we do a story that, in, remember when I said you got to know what your point is? And you got to have focus? If, if we have many points, which and one point is don't screen if you're 21, do screen if you're 30, how do you tell a story that gets both of those across without the emotional impact of the two of them counteracting each other? So people say, OK, I don't know what's going on. I'm not sure what to do. But then, then that point could be do the right thing uh, for each age group. Right. But that, because remember. Don't leave out the old ones, don't leave out the other ones, but there is something in there for every age. Right. But remember, you're doing, you're, you're, you're telling me, a, you're presenting a logical story. I'm saying I want to now convert this into an emotional story. Well, Young be. woman has to decide whether to get tested or not. Nobody has to lose out on this one. So there is something for everyone. Right. So how do we, so let's start putting this in terms of characters. Right, Give me so some characters. My family is sisters. Uh, I, my, I am, my sister is five, year old, oh, five years older than me. So mm -hmm. when I was 25, she maybe needed the screen, but I didn't. So it could be a situation where within family, a family. Exactly, yeah. within a family that now we could get them the message across. If somebody's younger than the other, you need it, you don't. OK, good. So, OK, good. That's a good place to start. So let's say we were doing a story about two sisters. Right. Um, one who's, what's the perfect age for this, if we want to tell it? Is 25 and 20 right, or is 30 and 20, uh, what, what's the age? 30 or 21 and 20? 30, the guidelines are indicating 30 to 65 to be uh, with this new technology. So one's... So we can include even the mother. Sure, of yeah. course, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mother with two daughters. Mm -hmm. It comes just to my mind, the story that I have uh, really uh, seen in friends of us. So that the couple got the, got divorced because they were debating yeah, about, sure. uh, yeah. about the, the side lot. effects of the vaccine. They had a young daughter at the age of 17 who developed condylomas, so she didn't want to talk to her mother about the condylomas. Mm -hmm. The mother was against the vaccine, the father was very much an advocate of the vaccine. Mm -hmm. And this led to a situation where the two parents really got into deep struggle and finally ended up with the um, separation of them and the daughter completely went away from balls. Mm -hmm. So I think this is this kind of a drama where you can, as you did in the, in the first clip, where right. you can really set up the emotional tense right from the beginning and then go <coughs> through systematically through all the medical aspects. But we want a happy ending, don't we? Well, it has to be on the screen. Right. Right. <laughs> okay, but here's the thing. So I'm going to keep on keeping you honest about this stuff. Let's say we've got a 30-year-old daughter, a 30-year-old woman, and her 23-year-old sister, something like that. Yeah. They also, she also has a parent. Now, 30-year-old yeah. is not maybe influenced by parents, but is not living at home, right. listening to mom and dad. I mean, she, what mom thinks matters, but it's not the only person. So if we begin with that idea that this is a story at least of three women, we can throw any of this out. A mother and two daughters. Um, what is the drama of the story? In other words, what's, what is the conflict? Because the conflict can't be just simply a conversation in which the 30-year-old says, I should get tested, but you shouldn't. Um, so how are we going to turn this into a story? Maybe, maybe, to, maybe that uh, one's, one, one woman's experience is not necessarily appropriate for the other, and maybe seniority doesn't. Uh, maybe one is trying to tell the younger one, you know, we should all do this, and this is right for everybody, and sometimes maybe like in families, the difference between the needs of different people are not addressed. Mm -hmm. Well, I think, see, I think you're getting at the, what, the, what, what the themes are, but I'm looking for plot. Well, I'm actually looking for what's the what? One of them to have done the wrong thing, and then the, best, the, uh, with the consequence of that, which will be for the family, such as the 23-year-old having done the wrong thing and having been tested. Or maybe there's be. a wedding, and, and they think that they all should get tested, just, you know, the, the wife-to-be maybe is a 30-year-old, and, and she gets tested because it's the right thing to do, because she's getting married, and she's going to start a family, and then they decide there's this campaign, and they're going to test everybody in the family, and the mom goes, and the younger one goes, but, the, but then the younger one gets the 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 she gets read the, the positive and it ruins the whole wedding because all of a sudden now it's not the wedding it's all about the daughter the young daughter being sick uh, and not prop you know like incorrectly and there's this whole drama about what happens and them trying to you know 
you know, figure that out and then they get proper right. testing. And so I'm not a doctor, but I'm going to ask you guys a question because I'm, I'm, not, I'm not clear on this. Okay, here's my, my issue. It seems to me like the argument to the 23 year the argument is not to the 23 year old, please don't get tested. The argument is about the program that says don't focus on 23 year old. I'm worried about telling a story in which we identify a single 23 year old who decided to go to get tested. She gets a result. We claim that sometime in the future it will turn out that this, t this result is not what is not actually indicative of where she is. And that's not going to be so much, it'll be a problem for her emotionally immediately, but societally it's a bigger problem. You understand what I'm saying? That my issue with the way we're telling the story right now is that the real question is not for the individual young woman. It's a question for the medical establishment to, 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 to send the wrong message, which just says all screening is just the same. Conversation of the people that work in the system and how they, how they come about doing things wrong. Like, oh, it's better to do it more. Let's just cover everybody. Let's just do everybody. Well, just private, private clinics, the, the point of the whole story is to follow guidelines because there's a lot of ill-informed clinicians who are making money by selling these tests. Laboratories are selling HPV tests to women anyway. Right. Eduardo, we need, we need a trigger to, to, to pull it off. And why not the mom having a positive pap smear? That's an event that triggers the conversation. And we're in Argentina, so they have all known the story of Evita Perón. So we have that already in the historical context. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Yes, yes. Mm. And, and, and that sparks the discussion between that mother facing uh, the, the or maybe maybe they result. also use the and then what happens to, to her younger children? Sell more. They exploit Evita and the situation to get people to buy more of the tests and creating the situation. So, and maybe you know maybe mm -hmm. there's there's the scene between like somebody trying to advertise that sell more of these and it's used the story of Evita because every woman's yeah, going to be worried about that. Trying to sell HPV tests outside of the guideline. Well, Okay, I'm going to give you a story. Maybe then the idea is maybe what we should do is create a story where there's a villain. A villain, a bad guy. That's what I mean. And wants to sell these tests to everybody. That's what I'm saying. So maybe this is a story about a conflict between a doctor, one doctor and another doctor, about like a, a woman doctor and a male, you know, I don't know how you want to do it. Uh, but a, 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 exactly. Exactly. Who tells the story, the prone story, and is trying to get everyone tested, and this other woman who says, you know, that's not the right way to go. Is there something there? Yeah. I'm not from the medical field, so you know. Uh, one of these, yeah. yeah. Here, come more. I'm not oh. from from the medical field, but looking at it, as, you know, I just read it, and uh, maybe uh, also it's a class struggle here mm -hmm. because it says that the poor women, do, you know, are not be able to receive the test. But what if, in, and in Argentina, I guess there's a the class difference, pretty much, could be very big in, in some areas. So. What if you have a working girl in a, in a place where this woman might have cervical cancer or, or some kind of thing like that, and she wants to get tested, but she can't get it because she's, you know, from the poor people, but she's, she wants to establish her rights to get tested. I think that's, by the way, here's the thing. That is a really interesting story. I think as a group, we have to figure out which story we're telling. Because we, we're going to have to pick one. I mean, it's one. Is remember when we said, we talked about that you have to be, that clarity and focus means that if you try to do too much, you do nothing. So we are, we're not in a world, we're, there's, remember, we're not in a world in which we are only telling one story. Let's, let's imagine that we are all in a writer's room and we're going to do many different stories. The question is not the, the whole range of stories, but what are we doing today? What single story, what single point are we trying to make? Now, it seems to me like this is asking us, although there are lots of things, to actually specifically talk about the, the idea of a general program that, 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 that talks to everybody as opposed to a focus program that where, where testing happens, where sc screening happens among the right age groups. Am I right? Being very specific about how to how to use the healthcare technology and and the dangers of abusing that's right. yeah, that's the exactly. dangers yeah, of that's abusing right. the, the the healthcare so tools that people have right. developed and and that the the medicine itself is the, the procedure is not bad is how it's being used right so and mm -hmm. maybe being aware of you know really choosing your healthcare professional that is very clear and specific and or you know like that's right. something that issue between a good doctor and a bad doctor right. which is what a lot of us i am not a doctor but a lot of us who are you know people and need services 
encounter and have problems with a good doctor and a bad doctor. I've had situations right. where I go to a doctor with a situation and they go, like, oh my God, they give me a horrible procedure that doesn't work. And then I go to a do do good doctor that solves it in two right. minutes. So to me, I'm just, as I also as I'm not a medical professional, just somebody who's listening to all of you, I would say that when I'm the sense of a story I'm getting, for example, and we need to develop it more, is the story about two different doctors. Say an older male doctor who has a clinic where he makes money, essentially getting everyone tested, where he uses the emotional arguments of Ava Perone and why people should go do that. And all these people are coming to him. And a younger woman doctor who understands the risks of that, maybe a specific story of a young woman who is tested by this clinic and is falsely positive and the impact that that has on, the, uh, on her. I don't know. I mean, I'm, now I'm spinning it out. But some way of telling a story that where the gist of it is there is a battle going on between in, in the medical community. And the wise thing is not just to say, I mean, there's all these good arguments that he would make that says, if everyone gets tested, we're better off. And everyone, I'm giving health care to everyone everybody and all of that and it looked good which is really great in a story but then there's that person who says no you're actually going about it the wrong way and you're going to undermine all the good by pretending to be right there's something like that maybe uh, for a moment, power struggle um, it could be that the person that's trying not to get everyone tested shouldn't be a doctor maybe maybe like a healthcare professional but in a small a uh, group of people may be thinking about the class struggle, so you can see the difference between a doctor... Oh, that's good. I like that. So who, would, who could it be? Who could it be? Tell me in, your, in an Argentinian society, and it, I mean, let's say this is at a town. Can you read here who the, provides the define, services? The mm -hmm. one with the Pfizer rules that's... and eventually violates the guidelines, it's probably a younger doctor, someone, uh, or maybe not a, a doctor, but someone who, because you described someone who's older and wiser, that person is more likely to be still hooked up to the old days of bad tests. Right. right. But you want one that would be some more like a predatorial healthcare provider who wants to make money on the side by selling HPV right. tests, not following the government's guidelines of applying this to the proper age. Right. But so that's good. But who's the woman? Who is? It, uh, let's say I'm in a I'm in a city, a small city or a town. I've got that that pri that practice that maybe, clinic. That's maybe it's around. Maybe the younger one is a ruthless really abusing doctor and then the older there's an older woman who's been dealing with women for years in the community and and has observed the rhythm of things Sounds and mm -hmm. and advises people in the community somehow maybe someone that maybe a but, patera, someone that right. gives right. Birth to children at home a midwife oh that's good a midwife. a midwife so it's good so she's not a medical profe i mean she's not a but she's but she's, she's, she's wise but she, has to she be right she understands she knows what's going she's taking care of a lot of the women in the community and she knows the families and knows the family histories because she's you know and she's informed right. and she knows Okay, good. So now give me this next part. Okay, so far. Who's the, we need, we can't do this theoretically. In other words, you can't do a story in which they just have an argument. It needs to be over an incident or somebody. So what's the story? Right, so who's the? Right, so. We go back to the family with three women and one of them getting married and and they wanted to do something for the family because they're all, you know, like, one's going to get tested, and the mom goes, and then the other one they, goes. They almost have a divorce even before getting married, huh? <laughs> Well, they know that the wedding gets ruined because, because everyone's worried about to, yeah. the younger Well, here's a question. I've got a question for you, though. I get that. But with being careful not to send the wrong message to people, I wonder whether we want to tell a story in which we say, if you get tested and you test positive, all kinds of terrible things are going to happen to you, so be very ca careful about about being tested. All right. So what what could happen? And by the way, I'm going to push you on who this woman is and what the relationship is between that woman and these two other characters: the male doctor, the female midwife. Um, who is this? Is this is this young woman her daughter-in-law? Is it? I mean, you know, is there? What? How do we do? Look, look, by the way, here's the truth about stories like this, and you probably know this, and when you see it. It's always better when characters are related in ways that they can't get out of. In other words, you know, family is better than friends, friends are better than strangers. So it's not that you can't do that, but if you want something that's really powerful, make the people's connections intricate, not, not absurd. You know, they can't all be you know, so closely connected. For the mother, hmm? in law, getting a, about to get married and finding herself with a positive result. You know, like, you know, like, sometimes I, uh, you know, like when a younger person gets uh, worried about having 
an illness, and sometimes because you don't have a lot of experience, I've seen this in, in younger friends, for example, that I've helped in situations, they get very, very worried. Oh my God, and my life is over, I'm not going to be able to do this, and they go into this whole range of horrible possibilities because they get one um, one test. Mm -hmm. And then it turns out that, you know, if, if you look into it more and you research a little more and you investigate, get a second opinion and check it out, then it ends up maybe it's not such a bad thing. And, and so also a little bit about that, about getting a second opinion, about not just, you know, going with the first, you know, right. and, and not getting overly scared or, you know, so this would be a 23-year-old woman who got an HPV test, and she was positive. And, that and maybe she didn't tell anybody. Yeah. Maybe she didn't tell anybody about the what she read. Well, you, you can go one step further, uh, adding a bit of drama that they propose her a compensation based on whatever, so that there is something that, that, that can be. People that would not be totally unnecessary yeah. for this woman. And, and she, she's a, about to go married, and of course this whole story explodes like weeks before the marriage and all the questions around where does it come from, what effect will this conversation have on fertility, blah, blah, blah. So I have a couple of questions. Um, you're, I'm 23. I'm a woman. I've just been tested. I've tested positive. How long before I realize that that is a false positive? How long before I know that, in fact, the well, test is... It depends on the conversation you had with the clinician, but the, the, the likelihood is that most of these tests, most of these results will be false positive. But when will I know that? In other words, when when will that truth be depends revealed? On how many conflicts we want to impose on her? You know, well, I'm sorry. It depends Medically. on how many conflicts we want to impose on her. Maybe she talks to one person. That tells no, no, no. I'm not. I'm not asking story now. I'm. I'm, I'm actually. I'm. I'm, ask, I'm asking medical questions because I need to know from my story okay. how what the what the span of my story is. I have gone. My character has gone and gotten a false positive. I know as a storyteller it's a false positive. You as the viewer don't know. The character doesn't know yet. How long will it take for the character? to figure out, get medical information that says that thing that you thought was... She could get, get that from the internet or she could get that from someone who's not well informed and uh, maybe a, a little overly uh, alarmist and uh, say, well, we need a procedure that... that no, 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 maybe I'm asking the wrong question. I'm not saying what would ha I'm saying at the moment where she says, oh my goodness, all the stuff I was worried about, that's not true. I don't have cancer. How long does it take? You get an information that puts you on a different level of risk. Mm -hmm. It's simply an increase in risk. And that information you carry on as the individual who has been tested positive. Right. But you can never say that there's virtually no risk as has been before, before that knowledge. So you behave, that's, that's you behave your whole life as if, or for a long time, as if you may have a risk of, of a cervical cancer, even though you actually are not at a higher risk of and cervical you cancer. You would get this, that, better, uh, that message for yourself. You can't be sure that you don't have cancer. You have you know from the internet information that you have an elevated risk, although it's fairly low still, but you are dealing with an information that puts you on an awareness about the potential that you can, could develop cancer. The very same if the doctor would tell you that you get a 30% of developing prostate cancer at the age of 70 years old. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So then you are in the, in the informational mood and the, the, the um, emotional mood that there's something going on with you that you can't really deal with it, and there's no way to exclude it anymore. So if you want to transport that message, I think in a story, we, you need to, to jump into through a different channel in my mind. So you really need to, uh, need to create what happens in fact. Our mother was told that she is being positive for HPV. And then we're exactly running the risk we just mentioned because over testing could lead to the situation that people say, oh, I don't want to be tested because that's bad information that I don't want to have. Uh -huh. And then we are entering in this extremely complex issue mm. that I don't see really a, a way how to solve it as so an HPV. Uh, initial clip, so. so what he's saying is in order to, to give you the contact, uh, a, a positive test in a 23-year-old woman is meaningless. Uh, and it could trigger a whole series of things mm -hmm. that would not benefit the woman, and plus she's stigmatized. Whereas for a woman who's 30 and over, a positive test does represent something that needs some action, some medical action. So mm -hmm. you want to do at the wrong age. Yeah. Yeah. But there is also the element of risk. Yeah, I don't know how you're going to so do that. If, if you just want to enter this issue, because there's no medical solution to it right now. You can, you can define the whole 
uh, work up process or procedures that are given in the guidelines and should be followed the guidelines. But if you really want to start emotionally in such a scenario, I would start with a 35-year-old woman with three kids who is being tested HPV positive by her gynecologist. She tells that to her husband and asks where did I get it from. Her husband maybe had a relation to some other woman, feels guilty by himself. And then you are in the middle of the emotional scenario where these individual relations between the two Somehow, yeah. Yeah. No, that's fine, but uh, the intent here for the people who design the stories is adherence to guidelines. Why shouldn't? Why should you yeah. so, follow proper guidelines so in that and not context, follow predatory mean, medical practice? That's what I mean. Then, then the guidelines are fairly complex, and you, you have to, to, to resolve the story by um, the, the woman and the husband goes to the physician. How would a, how would a uh, person um, find out about, you know, for example, uh, if, I, if I had this question about, uh, about whether the test is good or not or if it's appropriate, if I, if I had someone in my life and I wanted to find out and said, look, I found in the internet that, you know, or I found here that you, you really should look to a second opinion about this, or you know what I mean? Where where would you find the information to, to deal with, with that? For example, if I, if, you know what I mean? Well, there are proper guidelines, and the, the Argentina government has issued those, and the good doctors, people who follow yeah, them, but, but a understand person that gets them. A, a and is it the test? Where, where would they get answers to help them? You know, where would a person that goes through the situation get Going answers? to a gynecologist, right? So but if the gynecologist is the one that gave them, her gynecologist gave her the test at a wrong age and cost the whole situation, where would she find information to, so, to confront her doctor and say, look, say, I'm not sure about this. You made me have this test, and it says here, or someone told me. Well, uh, how would she describe this person close to a family or a nurse who follows the guidelines and understands? But, she, oh, I but I think the Let task me. we have ahead is actually trying to take this, this specific situation that's happening in Argentina about not following guidelines. And I think that's what we should dramatize, actually, because that's the task. Let me, let me, let me, make, let me make a suggestion, okay? Let me make a couple of suggestions about how we do the story. I'm going to say up front, this is a very difficult one to use. It's difficult for a couple of reasons. One, because it really deals with a systemic problem that it doesn't, you can't really get the sense of it from a single person, it's not true. Second, the, the course of a life in which a false positive that will only prove to, to create anxiety it has a span well beyond a normal television story. In other words, it's very difficult to tell a story in three minutes about somebody whose life has been changed by a test she didn't need to have. So what if, using all the stuff we talked about, it's, we still do the story about a practice, a clinic, who is uh, improperly applying the standards, testing everybody, a woman, a, a, a non-healthcare professional, a midwife who says, who is in conflict, but because she's not a doctor, actually is a, a disadvantage. And to tell the story about, for example, let's say we told the story about a family with six girls, all of whom got tested. I know, something like that. Or a town that we're all the, of the Everybody's, are exactly. Let's t tell a story, let's tell like an Ibsen kind crazy. of story, which is about an entire society, where we tell a story about a, a man and a practice who has tested all of these women. And so many people have, um, are, are testing positive, and all of the stuff that's going on for all of them. And maybe a generation of somewhat older women who begin to get, become hesitant to actually get tested. So that we end up with a situation situation in which you have a, 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 a town in which all the wrong people are getting tested with all of the wrong implications and because it's creating all of this anxiety all the right people have begun to exactly is that something right like that not on the people not getting tested which is the important i think it's right in health so I was afraid when we chose this story that this was going to be tough, and it's been tough. Well, the good thing about it, here's the thing that I like about it. It actually does, th this woman we have, this midwife, does feel to me like an Ibsen character. She, you know, out of, it's like a woman who stands up against the authorities and says, you are all doing this wrong. This is all going to fall apart. You've created, you know, I, I know you're the doctor. I know it sounds good to do what you're talking about, but what you've created is an entire generation of people who are running around behaving this way, and we're swamping the system. We're freaking everyone I mean, out. No gets, one's doing. Gets in connection with one of these uh, laboratory operates, operators. He said here in the information 
that the overflow of of testing would the, the laboratories don't have the infrastructure to deal with those. So maybe it's a it's a situation where a midwife and a laboratory against these doctors, this group of doctors that are doing this. And to put out the, the already gone. that implementation. So, okay. Sandra told me to give fifteen more minutes and okay. let you guys know so you can Great, okay, great. Perfect, thanks. Right. But if you want to touch with somebody through the emotional line, as we are trying to do so, um, then you have to focus on a single person and her problem with the system, right? Right. So how we can how can we integrate the system? So, so this is what to me. so this is what I'm saying. This is what I would do if I were if this were just my story room and you would all come in and you'd pitch me this as expert. I said, what do I have to do? I would tell a story. I'd create a character of a doctor who is testing everybody, who is mis uh, um, implementing the standards, who's, who's predatory, who's making money, he's using emotional arguments, he's saying the more testing the better, all of that stuff is true. I would create a character of a woman who's a midwife, who knows this, these people, who understands what's going on, who's watched these people, who will be in conflict with him, and maybe by the end of our story gets essentially run out of town. Right? Who doesn't, you know, who cannot stand up. I would tell a story about a town where we tell it two ways. One, broadly, everyone's getting tested. All of these women, lots and lots of positives, false positives, <laughs> uh, and a system that's getting swamped. A co and also tell the story of a family in the middle of all this, of a mother and a couple of daughters. And pick one of the daughters who gets that false positive and all the things she goes through and the mother who says I'm not going to get I do not want to be te and there's no way I'm going through this so we tell we tell the story of no doesn't work for you I want the resolution See, to me the resolution is not going to be a good one Yes. If the midwife gets run out of town, I want the doctor to get run out of town yes. or to change his behavior. How well, do we get there? Because I'm well, not seeing how we get there. Well, it's a good question. The characters that well, we were just describing is why couldn't this midwife be part of this whole practice by the practice? Uh -huh. um, this doctor just comes back from IPC. He just saw, well, there are these all these great new technologies. He wants to implement it. So he starts this whole communication program, or he wants to start going through all of his files. Okay, I'm going to do this now. I've got this new grade, whatever. I'm going to address it to all of the people in town. I'm going to send a, a callback kind of system. And then this midwife says, hey, sorry, but this is just not the guideline. Here's the guideline, and if you don't follow this guideline, Maybe the doctor seems to create some kind of conflict. Right. Why are they not married? They can okay. be married, so there you go. You could do that. By the way, one thing I would say is don't refer to guidelines in stories. Refer to the truth I know. You know what I mean? This is how you know how it works. Only because people are not going to respond to read the paper. They're going to respond to somebody saying, that's not how the world works, doctor. I mean, they could be married. She could be working for him as a midwife in his practice. Go on. Sorry, I didn't mean to, inter I did mean to interrupt, but that's all. Keep going. <laughs> yeah, go on. Yeah, so I was wondering, do we really need all of those people? Because for me, that seems complicating that story. Because it's really a woman fighting a system, as far as I Well, I just think from what you've told me that you need to, I don't know that each one of those people is going to be identified and have scenes, but I do think that there needs to be a sense of community in the story. That it doesn't work in from a, a single person too young being identified, uh, uh, being tested, or the doctor just. Has to do with Masses. That's has right. To do with a lot of people and swamp, like swamping the, the people in his files because he has all those files. Yeah. 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 Showing it, so not it's like showing that there's a lot of people, but not. Yeah, so he would start doing going through all of his files, saying, "Hey, I've got 300 women that I can actually call back." And Right, but I can write a drama and I can show people. So you having a scene where he says, look at my papers, is not as good as a scene in which I show a waiting room with people coming in and out and conversations that are going on. I mean, they don't need to be identified all as major characters. They can be that. But I do think that the story needs to invoke the feeling of a, of a, of a, of a world that's gone wrong. I'm still struggling with the resolution because, as you said, I mean, if you if you if you would have a clip of, of ten minutes and eight minutes are about the 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 nasty effects of HPV testing and only the last two minutes would be positive, then you would have a lot of people who are just watching it for five minutes and they would say, "Oh, no, I never get an HPV test." And that's exactly the opposite. That right, but I know I feel like I could write a story in which the doctor is winning in the sense that he's got the power and these people are doing it. But I know that the woman who's saying, I'm telling you 
you're making a mistake. This is what you're make, putting these people through. The upshot of this is, and when the, the older woman says, I'm not going to get tested because, or somebody says, I don't want to go through this, and she says, and that's the person who's going to actually be sick. I, we will, as an audience, understand that the person who's losing the power struggle is right. You know what I mean? You, you can tell the story so that the message is not that it's the right thing to do, it's the wrong thing to do. Now, I think this is the hardest part, which is to me the hardest part is to give it a happy ending in the five or 10 minutes because all of these things, the proof that that woman, that midwife is right, is a couple of years away. It's some time away. So I don't know whether we don't end up doing a story which would be like, and I keep on using like a story like an Ibsen story, in which the one, we, the, you know, where we know, like the master builder or something like that, where you know who the good, what the truth is in it, but it doesn't all work out okay. Um, I just worry about stories in which, in the end, the midwife gives a speech and says, right. but here is what we should do, and everyone says, you're right, we'll change, and now we're only going to test the right people. I, I think we have, the, the challenge of this is to actually tell a story in which this town goes wrong, and the person that we know is right loses, but the implication we have, that we have is if we're going to do it again, we ought to do it the other way, because this is not the way you want to go. You know, a cautionary tale. Yeah. You don't like that. Well, Maybe a happier ending. Okay, tell me happy ending. Erin Brockovich thing, where she doesn't necessarily confront the doctor alone. She rallies the community of women who have had a problem or who, you know, you know, it's like she's gathered a room full of women. And they're saying, oh my gosh, she did that to me. Or he scared my mother away. And they then join forces to say, you know, doctor, you're kind of a yeah. okay, I don't trust you anymore. Right. And now his power is taken away. Right. Okay. Yeah, Here's the thing. I, I think you, you might be right. If we were doing a movie and we had two hours, okay. we'd probably go. You're right. No, you're right. I mean, if we were doing a movie. We'd have the, we'd have this long arc, and we'd be able to see this, and it would take place over six months. I was thinking much more. We have four minutes of a story to do. But can you fit this in the opening ceremony later today? Very popular. Look, the truth is that here's the thing that, that what matters about this, because no one's actually doing this, is to give you guys a sense of what the challenges are of turning these things into stories, which is to say to, to have to have a single focus, to know that you're only really making one argument, because you're making a lot of arguments, people won't know it. To, personify the arguments as opposed to just using them as, as arguments themselves. Um, yes? Um, I, I was thinking, you know, sometimes you don't need, you know, sometimes these things, this, this like medical situations, at least in my experience, sometimes part of the, the, what, the reason why we stress a lot is because you think it's going to take a lot of effort and it's going to be very difficult to solve. And I've seen that sometimes you just turn around and the solution is very easy and next to you and all of a sudden you go like, oh my God, I've been suffering for 10 days and the solution's right here. Right. Like, just basically, every, all the women get, you got positive, you got positive? Wait a minute, let's find out. Oh, how long, this is for women, dear. Just finding out the information within, Within two weeks, within a week, everybody getting frazzled and all the girls getting together at the bar and they're all getting drunk together. I got positive. You do, you too, you too. Well, right. let's look it up in the internet. And then it's like just finding the solution and then all of them laughing right. about well, having a horrible week because they didn't, they didn't they find out the proper information. Right. It's, po it's possible. Now, here's my, this is my, uh, this is my caution with that, which is, I think that's true. But as a storyteller, I promise you, and you've seen these also, Two easy happy endings. You create a, a systemic problem that seems big, and you find a moment in which all the characters are going to sit together and say, oh, if we had just talked, we would be. I'm not saying it's not the way it works. I'm just saying that, that story is different from real life, and that people have, they, their, their receptors are up to stuff that seems phony. So, and by the way, plenty of times things that are real seem phony in stories because it just seems too easy. Yeah, exactly. There's a, you know, there are, there's a really famous book on screenwriting uh, by William Goldman who wrote um, All the President's Men and, uh, and uh, Butch Cassidy where he tells the story of a thing in World War II that he said he was never able to make into a movie because it was so crazy that people would say, but that couldn't possibly be real. And he'd say, but it is real. He said, but no, but you, you've made a story of it, so you, you've created it. So I'm not saying you can't get a, a good ending. I'm saying if you create a very common complex systemic problem with the power structure in the wrong place and all that so it's really interesting and you solve it too quickly you're the oomph of it for an audience goes away 
You know, the big problem with crappy American television, if you watch it, is in the last act of crappy American television, one character says to the other, oh, didn't you know? Here's the lesson. You shouldn't, you know, whatever you do, you shouldn't drink and drive. And the person says, you're right, I shouldn't drink. I'm not going to do that ever again. Now, I'm not saying that's what you're saying. I'm just saying, but that there is a... But but it's also I knew you were. I didn't want to be nice. <laughs> um, <laughs> about people researching on, them, on their own. Also about right. uh, the individuals becoming more responsible about their own health care and finding out the information on their own because although you may have good technology, you may have people abusing it and using it haphazardly. And so the, 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 the people have to not just consume the services. But yes, also be I think that that's right. But it's like it was you said, you guys had, there are thousand things you may want to say and there are things that actually connect to the other story you're doing but if you try to get them all in if you try to say you know what I'm trying to tell you I'm trying to tell you that screening programs that are going on right now and people tell you everyone needs to be screened that's wrong people in Argentina who are doing it this way as opposed to doing it targeted that's wrong but also it has a lot to do with where, where you are socioeconomically and how you're drinking and also what I'm also trying to say to you as patients is you have to activate yourselves and become more and, and become more knowledgeable that is too much stuff no one is going to get that the only thing we can do, and if you run it, if you have a television series or you have a movie where there are moments where other things can happen, you can get all of that stuff in. But for you guys, if you want to convey some basic thing, you have to hone it down and you have to figure out how to tell just that thing, not everything you're thinking. You know what I mean? It's got to be. Uh, so in this case, and I've been, I'm trying to be true to this because we could we could change it around and do something else right you got to do this then we've got to do this and this is the story of a systemic problem that gets worse over an, a period of time all things that are difficult to do in you know in a television series how are we going to how are we going to create a scenario in which this is not theoretical but practical how do you have a how do you populate it with some characters what's the plausible outcome in a given period of time because the outcome doesn't need to be the same. The message of the movie doesn't need to be the same as the plot. In other words, and we always used to do this with, with our, our television shows is we let characters make mistakes and when people criticize us, we say, that's not our point of view. Characters are different from us. Everyone who watches this knows what we mean. We don't mean do what they did. We mean understand the, 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 the lesson. Now, I, I think you're right. I think this is a story that told in a couple of hours would actually be really nice to turn it around and to have the, the bad doctor get a comeuppance and to have these women get, uh, get together and do that. The question is, how much time do we have and can we get there? Or do we need to leave it where you're saying, OK, this is a voice in the dark, but that voice is the voice we're telling you. And all of us know that a bad, a bad thing has happened in this town because the, because they 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 because there are all kinds of pressures to to test everybody economic pressures and you know, Argentina is susceptible to emotional arguments for all that right I think all that stuff is good um, I know I'm bossing you around but that's uh, um, other thoughts. And where is where is the negative messaging? Testing is something really, really good. That's right, that's right. Oh, you're worried about I am too, by the way. I think that's the big risk here is to say that it's something new. It's still something new before I, because I guess before it was pap testing and HPV testing. So we are changing two things. On the one hand, we're changing what we have into HPV testing, and at the same time we're saying, but oh, between twenty and thirty it's very bad. So we are actually for something new, we are already saying something bad. That's right, very complicated. So, that's why this woman very, very, very this woman is gonna have to be very explicit in saying why not forget about the negative part and only talk about HIV testing first and get that message across in a second step? I might say, by the way, if I were stepping back and saying I get to choose the memo, I might say you're exactly right. This is not the way to start. The way to start is to say at 30 get tested. Then later on we can come back and say something else. But that was not my job. My job or our job is to do this. How do we do this story? We so what well, we were contracted to. I agree with you. I think what it requires and the reason why I like this idea that there is both the younger there's this woman who is our voice who says, "Don't you see there are all these women out there who absolutely need to be tested, who are not getting tested, so you're testing the wrong ones." We have to reverse that. So that argument gets made strongly. But by the way, I would completely agree with you. I think this is a very, it's a 
potentially dangerous message to put out first, which is to say, all you 23 and 24 and 25 year olds, be very afraid of being tested because, you know, false positives are the worst thing that can happen to you. <laughs> they're just, they are positive, they're just not meaningful. I see what you're saying, right, right. Right. Thirty percent of the population. Right. Will be right. Twenty-one, except it's not as as bad and as 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 significant as it would be for a thirty-five-year-old woman. Right. Apply well. There's good medical action that, that that should be done at this point. So that that nuance would be terribly difficult to to, to provide. Right. 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 The biggest problem is here to put the guidelines on a personal level. Mm -hmm. Which frankly could never work because you always will have individual cases that don't fit into the guidelines. That's right. Right. So. So the reason for Argentina, Argentina is being a pioneer country for those of you who uh, understand why we chose Argentina, is uh, Argentina is being a pioneer country in rolling out uh, HPV testing for the whole population. They do have very good guidelines, in fact, but there's a danger of predatorial practice of uh, doctors and laboratories who may want to apply to be testing to everyone, you know, and just sell these tests for, for thousands of uh, pesos, I don't know, and eventually make money on the side. Whereas this is, could cause a lot of harm, could cause a lot of false positives. So the message is, well, don't do it. Here's the guidelines. Doesn't it, this uh, tells us that also, also the problem is a decentralized system that the decentralized health system of the country that every province has its own yeah. health uh, authority that implements those guidelines. So. Well, if there's no the, supervision. The, the, it's just hmm? it, it, this is outside of the scope here. It's just the nature of Argentina that's more a federation. Right. So they're just the government is implementing these things gradually in different provinces to right. see how it works. They can't do it suddenly at a national level. Okay. They're doing it right. It's just that there's potential for danger for abusing. But it brings a new challenge the for them. But it's it, a new it, challenge. Yes, it does for sure. And another one. Sorry. And there's a calling, the, the, the fact that Argentina is a country that over, if it's a problem who died of cervical cancer, there's a high level of awareness about the disease. Right. Mm -hmm. Tough one, huh? Unbelievable. I read it last night and I thought, I'm um, going home. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I, I wanted to cut this story out of the whole thing because I, I anticipated it. But they, these guys are having a wonderful time with vaccinations. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, guys. <laughs> no, no, I mean, it's, it's still interesting because if, you, if you're if you talking about guidelines and lots of areas in the HPV field are actually dealing with these problems, what kind of um, entertainment message transformation uh, it, they could one use to really promote the guidelines into the public uh, community. I think there won't be any possibilities to really educate a larger population about guidelines. It always goes through these emotional experiences everybody has by themselves, right? Right. So then one, I think one should come to the position that, uh, to agree that it's not, simply not possible to transport guidelines through these lines um, and, and, and these ways of uh, information transportation. Right, although, and maybe I'm not getting exactly what you're saying, it seems to me like we could do a story like you were talking about that just starts, po is a positive story about a, 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 an individual person who's 30 or 35 and the value of or the risk of having decided not to be tested. Right, yeah, and right. and they would she she would reflect what the guidelines are without referencing the guidelines. Yeah. The problem we have is to 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 also convey a negative, which is when not to do things becomes very difficult. How about, and when how about, um, how about one of the women in the family gets tested and you successfully treat her her condition, and everyone's celebrating the fact that there's this new technology has been so helpful and helping some, someone in the family, and the younger one decides, you know, or, or there's this predatory doctor in, in town who's doing, you know, so there's both things happening at the same time. There's a predatory doctor, and within that same situation, the same doctor provides a test for someone, and it ends up being good for her, but not following the guidelines, creates a situation for the rest of the family. So the same, the same guy, the, his practice in one way promotes the testing, which has helped some people, 
and some people are happy about it, and then some other people are it's a, disturbed you, by the results. You could, you could do that. You could. The same doctor is has to confront his own. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. You know, like right. maybe. Maybe, maybe he's not completely right. bad. Maybe he's right. Here's my issue with that. I think that's true. I think it's a mushy message and not very dramatic. In other words, the story that says, here's a guy who's gone out and done this, and all of these women are being, and we have an entire group of people who are doing this, and this actually has implications, because one of the things in here is the system gets swamped. There are reasons why older people don't get tested. They don't get doing it. That, to me, has some drama in it. I, I work. It's not that it's not true, but a story that you're 35 and you get tested and it's good. Here's a woman who's 23 and she gets tested and maybe that's not good, although not so easy for us to prove in, you know, as a single person over the course of a single story doesn't, it feels to me like it's about a bunch of things. See, that's what I'm, what I'm trying to do is find, well, I think we found a little bit of a way of telling this larger story that gets all of this stuff out and, but makes it seem like it's connected to each other. Um, but I, I mean, I understand what your, inc what your inclinations are. They would be my inclinations too if I were telling a story. I would start with a story about a positive story somehow, with specifics, with something interesting, with family relationships and all the pressures for and against about somebody who eventually ought to be tested and gets tested because proper guidelines are implemented. That seems like the right way to do it. Our job just turns out to be uh, uh, more complicated. It's it's um, so than that. Would you, would you, well, but, no, but but here's the thing. No, 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 no. The the message of the story is not HPV tests are, are bad. The message of the story is testing needs to be done properly because improper testing actually undermines the, the effectiveness in a given society. That's the argument the woman makes. So bad things happen to some people or their implications of it. But the through line of the story is we have a system here properly implemented will solve the problem. Improperly, we make more problems than, OK? That's the, that is the argument of our story. So the, the events of our story don't have, all the events don't have to prove the argument. They can be the, you know, they can, and they can prove it in the negative. 